What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 40 of my Liverpool FC playthrough here in Football Manager 2016 and today I have for you guys a end of season special to mark the 40th episode of this series. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying it so far. It's been a pretty fun save. I'm surprised how much I've got into this one. I initially thought this save was kind of going to just last me through the, you know, the first two weeks of the beta. We'd maybe do one or two seasons. I've got to say, getting towards the end of our third season here, I see this as potentially, you know, a semi-long term save throughout the year. You know, we might have the odd update down the line. You know, in a few months time, it might be a save I still play on and off a little bit. But for now... I'm just going to keep playing it because I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying it too. If we, for episode 40, could hit a thousand likes, like that's a lot to ask for. I think only episode 1 has got that many. If we could get that many in today's episode, that would just be absolutely incredible. Anyway, today's episode, as I mentioned, is an end-of-season live come special. We're going to be starting it with a Merseyside derby. We are at home for this game against Everton. Looking at how the league kind of shapes up going into these last four games of the year, you can see we are top of the league on 79 points. Arsenal uh, in second on 74 points, so five points behind us. Spurs in third have 67 points. So I believe Spurs still have a chance, but we'd have to lose every single game pretty much. It's very much going to be a two-horse race this episode. Uh, since the last episode, of course, there has been one game to tell you guys about. I guess the most important thing is to let you know that Spurs and Arsenal drew. So that allowed us to extend that gap over Arsenal to five points, as I've already shown. Uh, on our hand and kind of on our side of the pitch, uh, you can see we, we did our job in our last game since the last episode. 8-0 we beat Fulham. Crazy game. Um, I think there's going to be a few goals in here that might be in the goal of the month. I'm not sure if we're near the end of a month. We are. Because this is a live come, I'm not going to be cutting out any of the time in between, I don't think. Um, I might cut out some boring bits in post-editing, but I'm going to ramble along for this video. So hopefully you enjoy it. Get some popcorn out. Get comfortable. And yeah, we're going to do all the games that we need to do until we've kind of decided our fate in the league. So if it goes to the last day of the season and we're still needing, you know, wins, we'll obviously still be there. If we were to win the league or finish second, you know, with a game to spare, we won't bother live coming that last irrelevant game. Anyway, let's kick things off. It's a midweek kickoff against Everton, against the blue side of Merseyside. I'm hoping we can get a result here. Um, they did us a favour by getting a fairly good result against Arsenal halfway through the year, but today we need to beat them. I didn't live come the game earlier on in the year against Everton, but I'm hoping that we can get a good result here. And um, we're a good team, we've been playing well, and now we just need to kind of see out the end of the season. The last result in the live come, of course, was 5-3 against Tottenham. That was probably the last of the really difficult games this season. And we came through that test fairly well in the end. Um, of course, as I mentioned, we did beat uh, Fulham 8-0. That was great. It's helped our goal difference massively, as you can perhaps imagine. And it's left us in quite a nice situation where our goal difference is vastly superior to Arsenal's. So I'm not going to bother getting up the league table and doing all the maths just yet. We'll leave that to the last three or two, uh, two or three games of the season where we can actually start to maybe secure the league. Uh, Arsenal aren't playing today either, so we're going to have to keep an eye out for their fixture uh, when it happens. But looking at this game, it's against Everton. We are at home. I'm hoping we can just put in a great performance. The team for today's game, not 100% fit. I probably should have double-checked the conditions of players just a little bit, maybe considered rotation a little bit more. But we're going to go with it. As I mentioned, last game we were superb. Mbolo got two goals and Coutinho got four, if you were paying attention to the match report when I clicked on it. Uh, Coutinho scored two absolutely incredible long shots, which, as I mentioned, might be in the goal of the month. And I'll tell you what, Mbolo scored, but it's offside. It's offside. I know it's offside. When the linesman just suddenly stands still, I always sit with bated breath, but I did think that one was offside. But yeah, Mbolo getting a brace last time out was fantastic. Of course, uh, Sturridge is out injured at the moment, so we do need players to step up, and he really did step up last game for us. And we're on the attack again here against Everton. Looking at the stats, we are all over them at the moment. Nathaniel Klein trying to whip in the ball, but Tillemans going to have to try it himself. Gets the ball to Coutinho. Got four goals last time out. Maybe a bit of expectation for him to grab a few more today. And we're doing pretty well here. Henderson to Coutinho. Mario Gert to edge of the box. Coutinho threaded through. And assuming that's not offside, that is an absolutely beautiful goal there. The 12th goal of the season for Coutinho. His fifth goal in two games. And that was just such a nice passing move. Coutinho making a great run on ahead of Mario Gert. Uh, 
Just a quick one-two here, and the pass here waited to perfection. Coutinho, nice little tidy finish to the near post. And who is it in goal? Who is it in goal for Everton? I'm, I'm just curious. I don't think it... Well, it's not going to be Tim Howard now. It's Claudio Bravo. Well, that's not a bad goalkeeper to have, really. Um, Mignolet in goal for us. A player who... I think, relative to the rest of our first team, is probably our worst player. It's a position I'm weighing up improving. If you watched until the end of last episode, you would have seen us get our budgets for this coming season. And we have about £1.5 million excess wage budget and about £70 million to, pounds to spend on players. Now, I've already picked out one player who I'm in the process of buying, and I want to get the business done as soon as I can on this guy because I don't really want to lose him out. But I am actually signing Dybala. And the fee that I've agreed is, I think, £65 million, maybe just a little bit more, um, which is quite a hefty amount, yes, but he's an absolutely world-class player. Considering I was almost willing to spend £98 million, of pounds, I think it was on him in January, before I decided that I didn't want to be an idiot, I kind of feel like with the amount of money we've got to spend in this summer, getting him in for that kind of fee is probably going to be worth it in the long run. He's only 24. You know, he's got a lot of time to develop. Well, not necessarily develop, but just feature in the first team for a number and number of years. And he's already a world-class player. I think he's averaged above a 7.8 rating for Juventus in the last three seasons. And if we could get him in, that would be an absolute steal. So we might have that negotiation stuff uh, to do in this episode. Although I have, as I mentioned, already op offered him a contract. And the negotiations are well underway there. Anyway, looking at this game, we're 1-0 up. Players' conditions are taking a little bit of a tanking here. Uh, I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to take off Mbolo for Gabriel Balboza. I'm going to bring on Tiago Maia. So we're going to bring on the two former Santos youngsters. Um, it's only 1-0. Not particularly convincing at the moment. We have dominated the game. Everton yet to have a shot on target. But with 15 minutes left and players' conditions you know, going below 70, I've got a little bit of concern in me, I guess, that you know we might be caught out and with tiring legs and tiring minds we might concede a silly late goal so I'm hoping that we can just see out this game conditions are getting really really low here it is worth noting after this game we've got about a 10 day break but we need to stay switched on here and Barkley has a chance and Barkley scores well I, I kind of knew it was coming I said as I as I looked at the team I said I probably should have rotated a few players I didn't really think about it I just decided to go with the same team as last time out where we won 8-0 and it's 1-1 here and whilst a draw wouldn't be the worst result in the world in the world it wouldn't be the best way to start this live com I'm going to bring on Lacazette who didn't start this game just because he's still been coming back from that injury although to be fair he probably was in a position to start if I really needed him to uh, and I probably would have started him upon reflection however um, this game is going to finish 1-1 and hopefully it's not one we're going to live to regret here Unless there's going to be a late goal. With two minutes left, time is slipping away. It's going to be full time. Unless we're going to score from this late set piece, which we're not. 1-1 against Everton is a really disappointing start to this run of fixtures. Not good enough out there tonight. Even if Arsenal win, they will still only be three points behind us. And our goal difference is significantly better than theirs. They aren't playing today, so we've got a little bit of time to wait. But that was a really, really poor performance. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see how we get on here. So, Dybala set to sign. So, I'm paying £67.5 million pounds for him. There's some pretty hefty fees there. But um, we're paying a little bit over a period of time and quite a lot of it up front. But I'm pretty happy with that transfer. For um, £68 million, pounds, we're getting one of the best strikers in world football. He's 24. He's got a fantastic goal scoring record. You can see this year he's got 21 goals in 32 games. And the previous few seasons he's got a lot of goals too. And 10 player of the matches in 32 appearances. Like, that's pretty bloody good. So I am willing to pay that for him. He's going to come into the side. It's going to be our big transfer really of the summer. £68 million pounds, as I mentioned spent. Uh, and some of that is going to be over a period of time. But we still will have a little bit of money in the kind of kitty I let guess. So I'm not going to bother with any press conferences with this live com. Sometimes I'll do them when I'm just playing through, but my multitasking skills suck at the best of times. And so uh, rather than risk attempting to do a press conference and answering all the questions wrong, I'm just going to skip them. Arsenal with a fixture here against West Ham. We could do with a West Ham win, please. 
Okay, well, Arsenal just won 8 0. And I talked about how the goal difference was really good in our favour. The fact they've just won 8 0 kind of makes things a little bit more interesting because we have three games left. Um, they're three points behind us, but their goal difference isn't that much worse than ours now. <laughs> West Ham. I, I don't know how much Arsene Wenger, or I guess Arsene Wenger's retired now, but I don't know how much Pellegrini has slid under the table to the West Ham manager in return for kind of them performing badly. But it must have been a bloody good amount for them to lose 8-0. And that goal difference is going to be a little bit interesting. But anyway, Sturridge back. That is good news. He's obviously sleeping out with a little injury. But with his injury proneness issues, I didn't really want to aggravate it too much. So yeah, in terms of my plans, obviously, with this save going forward, as I mentioned at the start, I've really been enjoying it. My plan is to keep it going for a while. We've got a lot of exciting youth prospects in the under-21s. You know, a load of really good regens who I look forward to seeing develop in the team. And um, as I mentioned a few episodes ago now, I'm going to go through them in a load of detail in this year's end of season review. No matter if we win the league or if we come second, um, there's plenty to talk about. And it'll probably end up being quite a long episode where I discuss the future of the team, kind of how I see the squad transitioning. I kind of, when I came to Liverpool, realistically, I wanted to win the league within the first four seasons and really be challenging for it by the third season. This is the third season now. Last year, of course, uh, we finished second in the league, which was an overachievement, and definitely in my eyes at least. Um, you know, with the players we brought in over the first two seasons, I kind of just wanted to secure ourselves as a top four team and then be looking forward to kind of the fourth season as a lot of our players came into age to be that year where we really challenged for the title. Kind of as things have transpired, uh, this season, this our third season, really has been that coming of age season. A little bit sooner than I expected, perhaps. I think... The fact that we've had two crazy goal scorers in Lacazette and Sturridge has helped massively and the fact that defensively, at the very core, we look strong with Sacco and Zuma. Kind of, we have key winning ingredients there that are essential to any title push. So as I mentioned, um, we might see Coutinho get goal of the month here. In fact, he got runner-up, so that's a little bit disappointing. But he did get uh, player of the month. And then Bolo actually came runner-up. He got four goals in total, so he had a really good month. And he also got young player of the month, getting four goals in three appearances. And also Yuri Tillemans appearing there with a 7.53 average rating. Tillemans really developed this year. Was out on loan last year at Augsburg. This year he's come into our first team and he's performed better than I really expected him to and really cemented himself as a key first-team player. So unfortunately, we didn't get manager of the month. Brendan Rodgers picked us to that kind of accolade and that claim as Hull manager. Brilliant. Uh, Coutinho, British citizen. I don't think that means anything really for us. Looking at it here, Lacazette rallying the troops. We need to win all of our... Well, we don't need to win all of our remaining games. But if we win all our remaining games, of course, we are going to win the league. And um, we have probably the toughest game of this live com now coming up. It's going to be against Watford. As you can see, Arsenal are going to be taking on Crystal Palace in the later game here. But Watford in sixth place have been a bit of a surprise package. And given the kind of the situation at the top now, whereby a defeat and then Arsenal winning could see them close the gap to goal difference, and goal difference is fairly tight between our teams, I can't really afford to slip up in this game. At worst, a draw, and that's kind of saying something because I don't really want that to be the case. Anyway, looking at our team for this game, I'm just going to see how our assistant picks it and then change it from there. Um, he's actually not done too bad of a job, which is a rarity perhaps. But this, I think this is the team we're going to go with. I think I'm just thinking things over. I kind of want to start in Bolo, but at the same time, Lacazette and Sturridge are just difficult to drop. So I guess we'll go with these guys for now. In terms of where I see Dybala fitting into the team, I guess that's something that perhaps some people will be wondering. I see him playing fairly often as a complete forward for us, and Lacazette and Sturridge really competing for that poacher role. But he can definitely drop back into that track Batista role if need be, and for the sakes of rotation. So um, he's going to really just add to our already star-studded lineup up front and in kind of the attacking mid position. Of course, we already have Gertz and Coutinho who kind of compete alongside each other for that Trek Batista role. I feel like having one more player there who's also a very, very, very good forward in mind uh, is not a problem at all. And I think he's going to add some real class in the midfield and really be kind of the player who we start to build around. So, I think I'm pretty happy with this team. Looking at the average ratings in the last five games, with the exception of last game, the ratings are pretty bloody good. Players' condition has picked up as well. Of course, we have had a bit of a break. 
since the last episode. Looking at their team here, there's not many names I recognise. I recognise Ibarbo, Capoue, Velaquez, Nyon. And then it's a, it's a very changed Watford team, really. Although, to be fair, I probably wouldn't recognise that many of Watford's players if you gave them to me on a big list anyway, because I know they've had such a massive turnaround, of course, this summer in real life. But anyway, we'll go with that for the team talk. Hopefully, we can just get a win here. Watford in sixth place, really been an overachiever this year. We're going to have to be wary of them and certainly not underestimate them. Um... And as I already mentioned, anything less than a, a win is really just not acceptable and puts us in a very precarious position. Last year, we lost the title to Arsenal so narrowly, really. I think it was three points in total. I could not deal with losing it to them again. So I'm hopeful that this year, we can take this commanded position we're in and really run away with it. But we'll have to see. Uh, looking at it here, we are playing fairly well for the first 10 minutes. Um... We are at home, of course, for this game, so I'd expect us to get a win. But we are now forced into our second sub of the game within the first 16 minutes, which is pretty bloody brilliant. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to move Coutinho into centre attack in mid. And then we're going to bring on Bazaar and then play Tillemans as the roaming play playmaker and Bazaar as the um, box to box. In fact, I'm going to change that too. I'm going to move Bazaar into this defensive mid role. It's actually a role he probably plays a little bit better than Henderson, and also with Henderson already being booked, it's kind of asking for trouble having him being that kind of more defensive of our trio of centre midfielders because obviously he's going to be more likely to need to put in a tackle and potentially give away a foul. But 30 minutes in, not a single highlight to speak about. I don't know if that's a really pleasing thing or a slightly concerning thing. I'm going to go with a bit of both. Watford yet to have a real chance, but they do have the ball here and there is a highlight emerging. So I'm hoping we're not going to be conceding here. Now I'm on the overlap. We need to defend here. Ball crossed into Barbo. Great tackle by Fred. Mignolet with the save. Stop the rebound. Fred clears it out again. Watford with a clear-cut chance. Can we counter? No, we cannot. The pass right at the end of the move to Sturridge just not quite pulled off by Lacazette, unfortunately. But... We don't concede, and we'll go again here, and we have a chance. Ball switch very quickly to Freddy, plays in Lacazette, cuts inside. It's going to deflect in, but we are not going to complain one little bit. It's 1-0 here. 37 minutes in, we take the lead. Really nice set piece here. It came from a throw-in on the far side. The ball was very quickly shifted across to Fred at left back. Nice little dink into Lacazette. He took the ball inside. Hammered in a shot, was going wide, but it's flexing very, very kindly. And, well, sometimes you need a little bit of luck, and we've had a little bit of luck right there. And it looks like we're probably going to take the lead into half time, which is pretty pleasing. I'm looking at the stats. We've been the better team. We've definitely been the better team. Watford with just that one chance, which was that clear-cut chance. But that was a warning, and I'm going to tell the players I'm not happy. They look fired up, which is absolutely fantastic. I want us to really remain switched on. Although we have got what on paper would seem easier games in these remaining fixtures of the season, we do need to you know, refrain from being complacent. We need to stay switched on. We need to give it our all every single game. And I'm kind of looking for us to do that here against Watford in this second half at the moment. Things are going okay. We've used two of our subs, and so I can't really afford to use another sub just yet because it would really be asking for trouble if we get an injury or if we're forced into a change and we don't have that option. So we're kind of just going to have to, I guess, stick it out with the hand we've been dealt here as Coutinho has an effort saved by the keeper there. But that was a half chance. Maybe we have another chance here. Zuma winning the header. Tillemans dribbling out wide, using that pace of his. Can he whip in a ball of quality? Pulled back to Bazaar. Hits it from range. It hits both posts. And wow, it somehow cleared away. And that was a, a really unfortunate effort, uh, effort there for Bazaar. Coming on off the bench, of course. The young Dutch player who, at one point in the season, we thought we might be losing to the team who, of course, knocked us out the Champions League PSG. He signed a new deal. And he's been a pretty key player for us so far this season. But anyway, it's 1-0 here. 20 minutes left. I don't really want to change too much. We're playing very well on the front foot here. And I feel like just changing to defensive with 20 minutes left. Taking our foot off the gas might just let Watford have room to play in. So we're just going to kind of stick things out as we are at the moment. Looking at it, we're having slightly more possession. Although it's pretty close. But Watford been very limited in their opportunities. And you can see there's... Well, there was none of the ball in our half in the last five minutes at one point there. 
15, 15, no there's not, there's 5 minutes left Jack, one more change that I have to make, I'm going to take off Henderson for Kovacic, um, just because, well, it's a bit of a silly, unnecessary kind of risk I guess to uh, play a player who's already booked in the midfield, especially one as important as Henderson with so fewer games left. Mignolet going to collect the cross there. It's going to finish 1-0 here. Not the most convincing win, but a win nevertheless. And it's exactly what we needed from the team. And it will ensure that the gap actually grows to six points over Arsenal. And they have a little bit of pressure on them now to win their next game, which is going to be against Crystal Palace. Looking at it here, Mario Goethe broken his toe. Going to be out for a while. Nathaniel Klein, back strain, not going to bother with an injection. We've got alternatives who can certainly slot into the team. And it's been, I, I guess, an okay start to this live comp. Really, I'd maybe have liked the results to go a little bit better, but we, we've got four points from two. Um, we knew kind of the situation going in. We needed to get three wins in a draw or um, four wins to absolutely guarantee ourselves the title. These results don't really matter. It's this one here. Arsenal v Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace, do us a favour. And Arsenal win quite convincingly. And do their goal difference a massive favour again. It's getting to a stage now where that goal difference is kind of going in Arsenal's favour. They've been winning a few of their games by a fairly hefty margin. Our next game is against West Ham, however, who Arsenal did beat 8-0. So maybe a glimmer of hope there that West Ham... You know, they might be a little bit susceptible, they might be a little bit weak, we might be able to break them down, help bolster our goal tally for the season. Crystal Palace relegated, losing that game to Arsenal. It's a sad day for Palace fans. I think I saw Pardew got sacked earlier this season. If we look at the league table, they are the first team to go down. Norwich and Huddersfield fighting for their lives. In fact, I think Huddersfield are down now at this point too. They are. So really only Norwich left who can save themselves but they're going to need a win and a point from their remaining games which isn't going to be easy for them right uh our game v crystal palace has been chosen for tv i believe that's the last game of the season so at least we're playing the team who are bottom of the league for the last day of the season i mean i say that we don't well i personally don't in fm have the best record for taking on kind of teams i expect to beat so i feel like very often i'll play against the teams towards the bottom and they're the games which I should be winning and you'd expect to win and then I somehow slip up. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case against both West Ham and Crystal Palace here. I'm going to, as I mentioned, try and refrain from letting my players get consist uh, complacent. Just a public service announcement as well at this point. You will notice on my screen auto-saving is kicking in. I have it set to fortnightly. And um, if you don't have auto saving set up, please set it up because if you ever if your save ever goes kind of off and it breaks and it doesn't load anymore, you know auto saves will save your saves and it's really easy to turn on in your preferences. You wait maybe an extra minute or two depending on the speed of your PC and you have peace of mind knowing that if it all goes horribly horribly wrong, you still have your uh, save file. Uh, if one version should get corrupted or such. The amount of people I see who lose save files. I, I made the mistake as well, actually. I think it was at the start of FM14. I had a save with Watford that went boom during the beta. And it was a sad day. Moment of silence for that save. Um, but I didn't have auto saves on. And since that day, I've sworn down that I will always have auto saves on. I will never... Uh, you know, leave myself in a situation where I have them off and I'm potentially screwing myself over. But anyway, I don't know if Arsenal are going to be playing sooner than us here because we're playing on the Sunday. We will have to check. But depending on how that goes, this could be a deciding game for us. Um, let's have a look at the league table here. So Arsenal haven't played a game in hand. Do they play today? They do. They play today against Watford, who we only beat 1-0. Maybe Watford can do us a favour. Their last game is also going to be against Aston Villa in 10th. There was a point when Villa were really challenging for top four. And then, well, they weren't anymore. And they, they ended up really sucking towards the end of the year. However, they might be able to do us a favour. Looking at it here, Arsenal are going to be taking on Watford. We take on West Ham. Both of us playing away from home. We have a few injuries to consider here. Klein out injured. I've got in Jedvai. Is it Jedvai? We'll go, we'll go with Jedvai. Um, if I've said that wrong, I, ap I apologise. I know I suck at pronunciations. It's if, if you're new to my channel, you're probably still getting used to it. If you've been on my channel a while, you know. Just 
if j just nod it and pretend that you agree with me and that I'm saying it perfectly fine. It's the way to do it. But we brought this guy in on loan. He really hasn't played for us, but we needed a backup right back, and we've got one here. It's kind of odd, actually, because obviously I loaned out um, two of our fullbacks because I was worried they weren't going to play first team football. One was Andrew Robertson, who probably will be a player I look to maybe sell with the exam uh, with the addition of Fred in January. But we also have Peruzzi here, who we're loaning out for really, really decent money uh, to Dynamo Kiev. So I decided to bring in Jevai or Jevaj, or however you want to say it. Make up your own way of saying it in your head. And uh, he's going to have to play today for us to help us out. But in terms of team fitness, uh, we're not in a bad situation by any means. I'm actually going to let Tar uh, Targo Meyer's got an injury. No, I'm not. I was going to say I'll let Targo Meyer play, but with his current injury situation, I'm not. I'm also actually going to demote Storage to the bench. Storage in his last five games... Not been in the best of form. One goal and one assist, but an average rate of 6.86 is really low by his standards. And Bolo, on the other hand, four goals and one assist in his last four. Definitely deserves a chance here in the team. So we're going to let him start as that poacher for us. And hopefully he can put in a really good shift. We are playing, of course, away against West Ham. I'm going to get the fixtures up on our screen so we can keep track of the Arsenal game. If Arsenal slip up here and we win, we do win the Premier League, and that would be one hell of a feat, really, given the team. Granted, I've spent a lot of money on this team. I've really kind of built it from the ground up. There's um, there's still a little bit of a Liverpool core, I guess, when you look at players like Sacco, Mignolet, Henderson, but um, it very much is my own team, I guess, at this point. But anyway, set piece here, cleared away. Now can we break Lacazette up to Briel Mbolo, who, as I mentioned, had been in great form. Fred through Henderson, who had an option to pass it, but didn't get it away. And now West Ham going to try and break away quickly. But Coutinho, with an uncharacteristic tackle by him, and now Tielemans bringing the ball forward. Options in the middle, cuts inside. What a run by Yuri. Saved away, and no one there to latch on to the rebound. Let's get up the league table real quick. Just so you guys can keep track of it. I'm also going to get the fixtures after this highlight. Because we have a chance here. Henderson, Coutinho, Lacazette bangs it in. I don't think it's offside. It's not. His 21st goal of the season. With the addition of Diabala, our striker options are going to be pretty plentiful next year. And I'm really relishing kind of the team that we're going to have. It's going to be a pretty exciting time to be a Liverpool fan for our imaginary managers in this save, uh, imaginary fans in this save with the strike force that we're going to have. Arsenal drawing their game still. So I've got to remember to scroll through this latest scores thing because I believe it'll all, it'll kind of all get broken when goals go flying in. But we've also got the league table here. As you can see, if Arsenal failed to win this game, we'd go five points clear with just one game left. Looking at the stats of this game, we are absolutely demolishing West Ham. Not really a surprise that Arsenal beat them 8-0. We're having 70% of possession at one point. They've yet to have a shot on goal. And this has been a pretty convincing display at the moment. Albeit at 1-0, can't get too carried away. Watford are beating Arsenal, however. Maybe we can start to get a little bit carried away. Arsenal going to need two goals to turn around that deficit. And it's looking like at half-time, we're going to be winning 1-0. Arsenal are going to be losing 1-0. And there, there might be hope for the title to be secured a day early. And that'd be quite nice. There's nothing worse than it going down to the last day of the season. I'm going to tell the players here, I'm pleased with how things are going. They absolutely bloody loved it. Great team talk there. We're six points clear at the top of the table as things stand. Weird Tina Vanovic playing for West Ham. Didn't even realise they'd signed him in this save. That's quite amusing. Coutinho's picked up an injury. We'll sub him off. It's a little bit disappointing, perhaps, that this game is still only, well, 1-0 to us. I might bring on Sturridge in about the 65th minute if it's still only 1-0. Given the importance of this game, to fail to win it would be a little bit bad. Particularly looking at the stats, how much we're dominating it, but... We've not actually created that many clear-cut chances. For a game that we've dominated as much as we have, there's been a distinct lack of highlights. Let's bring on Danny Sturridge here. Mbolo, not had the best game. Uh, do I want to make another change? I'm going to take off Henderson, I think. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Shut up, Jack. Let's just keep it it's plain and simple. I'm going to save one sub. Morata has just equalised for Arsenal. This would still, at this point, mean that we are going to win the league today. But if Arsenal get one more and win, regardless of our result, we'll know that going into the last day of the season, we still need to beat Crystal Palace, who 
well, as you can see, a rock bucket, bro, blah, blah, can't talk, rock bottom of the league. Still 1 0. What's happening in the Arsenal game? It's still 1 1 there. There's three minutes left. We could be about to secure the title. It'd be a little bit anticlimactic to do it in this manner. I was hoping for a really emphatic win and, um, you know, to do it in style. But a 1 0 win away from home, you know, sometimes you've got to have those more grindy results, the ones where you just kind of get what the result you need and the performance, you know, maybe takes a back seat. And it looks like it could be one of those games here because it is. The 93rd minute, time is about to be blown. Looking at the Arsenal game, it's still 1-1 at the moment, and unless there's a very, very late sting in the tail and a very, very late goal for Arsenal, we are going to win the league right here and right now. And we have done exactly that. What a way to do it. This season has been one hell of a year. Last year, we got 83 points and finished second. That was a total that the previous year would have won you the league. We were very unlucky. This year, we've continued to develop our youngsters. We've continued to focus on youth. Uh, Coutinho, not a long-term injury, but that is kind of at the back of my mind. We have won the Premier League. A great win. The first time Liverpool have ever won the Premier League. Yuri Tillemans getting the Man of the Match award. And that is a pretty pleasing way to round off this, our third season at the club and episode 40. So as I mentioned, next episode we will have a look at kind of our team in detail. We'll review the season. There's going to be a lot to talk about in terms of the youngsters, the future of this save. Some ideas I've got floating on in my mind for how I want to develop this squad further. Um, in terms of where this save goes from here, I, at the moment I'm really enjoying playing it. I intend to continue playing it for a little while after the beta. As you guys watch this, it, the beta is probably already finished. As you guys know with any YouTuber really, you tend to build up a little bit of a backlog, which is where I'm at now. Um, but yeah, I intend to keep this save going for a while. I'm quite attached to it. I like some of the regens we've got coming through. It'll be interesting to see if we can kind of uh, turn our team and this dominant season into kind of a dominant um, spell and a dominant era I guess of the Premier League where we have our Liverpool side here and we kind of consistently do well in the league but anyway that is going to wrap up everything for this episode 40 my, uh, my voice is starting to go as you guys might be able to tell uh, I just want to say a massive thank you to you guys who have been supporting this series as I mentioned at the start if we could reach a thousand likes that would be absolutely incredible and yeah other than that if you've got any comments leave them down below and I will talk to you guys in a bit I'm out <laughs>